Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. For those that don't know, my name's Tim. And uh, today I'm going to come to you with kind of a two-part video, I guess. Or actually more of a collection of pictures. As I talk about uh, seven positives to retiring in the Philippines. And later on, I'll talk about seven negatives to leaving Canada. Now, for those who don't know, I've lived here in my uh, native country, Canada, for almost 69 years now. I've been to the Philippines a few times. I have a lot of things that I've seen there that I really like. And, you know, there's a few things there I've seen that I wasn't too hot on. Still, all in all, I think there are a lot of positives to retiring in the Philippines. Number one that I have is the cost of housing. You can rent a house or a condo or even an apartment way cheaper than what you can in North America. I mean, probably for anywhere from $250 to $400 a month, you can have a pretty nice place to live in. Now, if you're talking Canadian money, I, I said that as American dollars. If you're talking Canadian money, you can add on about another third to that. So, you know, 300 would basically become 400. In any case, the cost of rent, and even if you're going to uh, buy a place, it's going to cost you less than building it or buying it here. Number two I have is, uh, it's a more laid-back, stress-free lifestyle. Once you get off the plane and you get to your destination, it's like the stress just kind of melts away. So, it's really pretty nice just, you know, waking up and not being, feeling the stresses that you do back home in Canada. And, uh, number three, is something that uh, a lot of people mention. People are more family oriented and there's a lot of respect for elders there. If you're an older person, you know, you'll, you'll find that young people just treat you a lot differently than they do here. And that doesn't matter if it's nephews or nieces or, you know, brother-in-laws, sister-in-laws, uh, they just they treat you with a great deal of respect over in the Philippines. Number four that I have, there's no snow. No snow. Although there's a rainy and a dry season, it's basically a two-season country, uh, you'll find that in the summertime, your two hottest months are going to be April and May. And you better bring some sunblock. And uh, if you have an air-conditioned place, you'll probably want to spend a lot of time in there. Uh, either that or at the beaches. Another place that uh, people quite frequently in the Philippines go to is some of the large, beautiful malls they have there. Uh, they're always nicely air-conditioned. It's uh, like a city within a city. Their malls are huge compared to what we have in North America. And they're always spotless and uh, quite modern, to be honest. Uh, now, number five, I have freedom to live the life how you want without Big Brother telling you what you can do and what you can't do. Not so much during these COVID times. I mean, it's a different animal over there right now. Uh, quite personally, I wouldn't want to be in the Philippines now. Uh, as much as I love the country, it's just not a place you want to be. It's almost like a police state. Uh, you'll have guards all over the place telling you go back home or turn around, you can't go any further. Uh, this COVID-19 has really thrown a wrench into the Philippines and it has made it really unpleasant for foreigners. I know people over there that have become expats and if you're over a certain age, you're not allowed to go out of the house unless it's absolutely important. Uh, if you have to go somewhere, then you have to go, but they really want people 
that are over 60 years old to just stay home. Uh, that's not me. I wouldn't want that. But under normal circumstances, it's a beautiful place to be. And uh, pretty much a lot more freedom than what we ever see here in Canada. I mean, if you want to ride in the back of a pickup truck, fine. You want to ride on the top of a jeepney, that's okay too. Ride in a tricycle with no helmet, not a problem. Number six, I have the fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, they're available pretty much all year round. Just go to the market. You're going to find some really good ones there. And, uh, you know, that's just nice being able to have fresh fruit and vegetables all the time. The local markets are cheap too. You can find a lot of stuff there and not have to pay a lot. Number seven, I have the locals are for the most part friendly and English is the country's second language so communication isn't a problem. That's big for foreigners. I mean there's a lot of nice places a person could decide to retire. A lot of nice places you could decide to go for a vacation. But if you can't speak the language, it's not going to be very nice at all. I mean, you might enjoy the scenery and everything else, but it's not the same as if people can't speak your own language. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff to consider. Philippines is a good place to think about for retirement. And uh, my wife and I certainly plan on being there. We don't want to go there before this COVID mess is straightened out, though. It's, uh... It's just not the kind of place I want to be if I can't go out and uh, enjoy life anyways. But this isn't going to last forever, and I think before long things are going to be back to the way they used to be. So that's kind of my little thoughts on seven really good things about retiring in the Philippines. I hope you're enjoying them. And now I'm going to start on Canada. Stay tuned and see what I have to say about that. What I have here is my list of seven negatives to leaving Canada. Now I've lived here for my whole life, ever since 1951, so I know quite a bit about this country. Uh, the big majority of my time here, admittedly, is in southern Ontario. Uh, but just recently, I mean, like four months ago, we moved to British Columbia. And uh, so, anyways, most of what I have to say is probably going to have to do with what I've seen in Ontario, but also some of what I see here in British Columbia. The first thing I have on my list is, number one, the country's clean. We have clean air, clean water. Pollution in Canada is actually pretty low. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're walking down the sidewalk or going through a park, whatever. You just don't see trash and junk all over the place. Uh, people here care about the country. And if they don't, there are probably fines that they're going to end up with for lettering or whatever. But Canada is a very clean country. So number two on my list is food. We've got some of the very best food in the entire world. We all love to eat what we grew up with. Stuff that we had on a daily basis. That's not something that you're going to find someplace else. When you move to another country, you're going to eat local more often than you want to. If you don't, it's going to cost you a lot of money. And the chances are, if you're married to a person from that country, whether you like it or not, you're going to be eating that stuff. It's not going to be the same as sitting down to a big plate full of mashed potatoes with roast beef, you know, vegetables, gravy covering everything. You know, there are people that can do that. They can just walk away from food that they've been used to for their entire life and go to eating whatever locals do in whatever country they go to. But uh, you're going to miss the food. You really are. My wife and I went to the Philippines. Uh, we landed there in the middle of April and we came back to Canada in the middle of June 2019. By the time that we were getting close to coming back to Canada, I was just 
almost drooling at the thought of coming home and having Canadian food again. You can buy food like that in the Philippines, but it's not going to be cheap. And uh, I guess that's something you're going to find regardless of where you go. If you love rice, if you love uh, a lot of vegetables, if you love fish, pork, uh, and chicken. Chicken's pretty big in a lot of these countries too. If you love that stuff, then you're probably not going to have any issues with it. But myself, I really missed the Canadian food when I was away. Number three that I have on my list. Although most people are guilty of speeding, the highways are good. And other than breaking speed laws, people for the most part obey traffic laws. So you feel a lot more secure on the roads here in Canada than you do in a lot of the other places in the world. I mean, the first, uh, first time I was in the Philippines, I was shocked at the amount of times whoever I was riding with would pass on a blind corner or they'd pass coming up to the knoll of a hill. Just the most common thing in the world there. And uh, if you do that in Canada, you're going to be dead because nobody expects somebody else to be doing that. You, you kind of take your life in your hands anytime you're out on the roads in, a, in another country versus Canada or say for instance uh, USA. Traffic laws are obeyed fairly well in these countries other than the fact that, like I say, uh, people are prone to speeding. Number four on the list, it's easy to find good used motorcycles, cars or SUVs, or for that matter pickup trucks. You can find them at reasonable prices. You just got to look in the Auto Trader or look on Kijiji, Craigslist, whatever. Those places are flooded with good vehicles for sale at good prices. When you buy a used vehicle here, it isn't junk. They really put them through some strenuous uh, tests. They, they have to go through certifications and, uh, you know, you're pretty much assured when you buy a used vehicle here that it's going to be in good shape. Number five on the list, health care. That's a big one. Although each province across the country has their own health plan, and they can differ quite a bit from one province to another, if a person needs to go and see a doctor, or even go to the hospital for an extended stay, it doesn't cost anything out of your pocket when you leave. It's paid through your taxes, so, you know, we complain as we do, about our taxes all the time. We're taxed almost to death in Canada. But if you've got to go in the hospital, say you got a gallbladder operation like I did maybe 20 or 25 years ago, if you go in to have your cataracts done in your eyes like I did about six to seven months ago, when you walk out of that hospital, it's just thank you and uh, we'll see you around. You know, appreciate the service, bye-bye. You know, even if you go in the hospital with cancer, or a heart attack, whatever, and you're in there for a long, long time, you don't pay a cent when you leave, if you leave. You know, sometimes you don't get out of there with your life, but we do have good health systems here, so your chances are a lot better. Number six, fast, easy government services and banking. In most cases, a person could do almost anything and everything on their home computer or mobile phone in a matter of minutes. I mean, for things that are a bit more complicated and you have to go down to a bank or a government office to do something, then that happens. It usually takes no more than 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour and you're in and out and on your way. So the convenience in Canada is really, really good. I've ordered plate stickers for my car, the annual thing where instead of buying new license plates, now they just put a sticker on the plates you have. And uh, I can do that online. It takes about 10 minutes to do it. And you know, about five days later, there it is in the mail. So 
little things like that. They're just so easy to do. And then the very last one that I have, number seven, and the reasons that a person might find a bit negative to leaving Canada is family and friends. For a lot of us, the most important of all would be the family and friends. We all have those who we love, and we miss more than all the things listed above. You know, some of us will be leaving parents that are very old. I did that actually when I came to British Columbia. My father's 96 years old, my mother just turned 93. That's hard walking away and uh, even just going to the other side of the country that you're living in, let alone moving to the other side of the world. Our sons and daughters, uh, maybe grandkids, our brothers, our sisters, as well as our cousins and those we've hung around with pretty much forever. It's hard walking away from all that and going to a new place. I mean, after a couple of months, it may start really wearing on you that you're no longer with these people. That you no longer can see them and uh, enjoy the things you've done with them for all those years. And, uh, you know, there's always that worry in the back of your mind. Is a son going to get an accident or or something serious going to happen to one of your family members and there you are a long way away. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of stuff to consider when it comes to leaving the country you grew up in. I hope that some of this has been of some use to people, maybe give some thought to uh, your future plans. I know there's a lot of people that think of leaving Canada or the U.S. and migrating to the Philippines or Thailand or, you know, Vietnam. Just so many places that are cheaper, maybe even to Mexico. So many places that are cheaper a person can go to live and uh, spend their retirement years. But there are downsides to all of the things that you plan on doing that kind of balance out the all, all the good things, you know. There's going to be things you regret when you leave the country you grew up in. And there are also going to be a lot of things you love about the new place you go to. So, anyways, just a kind of a thought-provoking video. I hope it hasn't been too long. I mean, I know it's dragged on and I apologize for that, but... I think all of these are valid points and uh, things that if you've been thinking about becoming an expat in another country, give it some thought. There are uh, other alternatives too. Uh, one of the things we've thought about is spending six months in the Philippines, six months in Canada. If we spend a little bit less than six months outside of Canada, I actually think our health insurance within the province just carries on, but it will expire if we're out of the country for too long, so as an older person, that's something you really got to think about. I thank you for watching. If you have any thoughts, uh, feel free to jot them down, I'll try to reply when I can. And Y'all take good care, and God bless, and uh, stay safe. Bye for now.